Hi, and welcome to the program. I'm Brent B, and I'll be giving a little demo today using wood stain and wood dye to make a little prehistoric sunset, which I'll use as a backdrop for making a game board. So uh, with that, let's get started. First thing I'll do is go right into some yellow wood dye. And uh, we're gonna put that right on the bottom. I've taped off the board, as you see so that I can differentiate between the sunset and the ground. And I've prepped my board by sanding it down to 220 grit, or sanding it with 220 grit sandpaper. And so it's all ready to take the wood dye. Now normally when I'm using the wood dye, I try to use long strokes so that it doesn't leave blotch marks. However, with the lighter colors, you don't have to worry as much. It's pretty forgiving. But as I get into the darker colors, I'll use longer strokes. Okay, we'll get a little more in there. And one of the things I found when you're working with wood is of course wood's natural it has imperfections don't fight them use them so today i think instead of grieving over that knot there we'll just work it in to be a little sun or maybe a a meteor who knows all right so i'm going to go into my orange now and so i'm going to make sure i'm a little longer strokes here. Probably get a little more on my rag. And I'm just using the same dirty old rag here for the orange. And I'm going to blend that down into the yellow. I mix my dyes using isopropyl alcohol, which is nice if you can stand the odor. It works really good because it dries so fast. It's not gonna soak your wood, which would lead to warping. All right, let's come in from the side and catch a little bit of color there. Maybe a little bit over here. All right. And we will start putting on the red. And again, using long strokes so that you don't get blotch marks. And I have found in my short time working with wood dye is that you want to sand down to as fine a surface as you can. If you use something like 150, then it's still going to be pretty rough and your sand marks are definitely going to show up. But if you take it down to 220, it's pretty good. It's a nice smooth surface and works really good. Okay. Always good to stand back a little bit and see how it's looking. I think we could blend that a little more. So we have a nice smooth transition. Another nice thing about mixing your dyes with isopropyl alcohol is it does make it easier to blend. As you're going back over it, the alcohol will lift some of the color that you previously laid down. And uh, bring it up. Let's see, I think I'm gonna give a little blush down here. Maybe a little bit over here. Just to add a couple accents because it's pretty. So I'm going to get a little bit of blue up there just to give the indication that night is falling. Try not to go too potent on the dye. Uh, one of the beautiful things about the wood dye is that you can apply multiple coats for a darker shade. It's not like stain. With stain, 
the wood will take what it wants and then it will give you back the rest. Not so with the wood die. With the wood die, it will keep taking and taking. So each coat is going to give you a deeper, richer color. So don't go, don't be afraid to start off nice and light. You can always go back and add to it. All right, there we go. That's looking better. Can't have a completely pink sky. Okay. Okay, I'll give it a little accent colors there. Maybe it's a little, well, maybe it's like a little cloud, huh? What would Bob Ross say, a happy little cloud? All right. Come in with that a little bit. Make it a little more interesting. Maybe I do want a couple blotch marks just for a little cloud effect. Like that. Okay. Let's roll with that. I'm just gonna take a cotton swab here and use my dark color and just give the indication of some distant mountains. I'm color that in. Maybe it's a maybe it's a distant volcano, huh? Okay, now I've repositioned my tape to protect my horizon on the bottom, and I'll go ahead and apply my wood stain to the bottom. Wood stain, of course, you don't have to worry. You can go ahead and saturate the wood because it's only gonna take so much. I like it. Pine takes stain really well. A lot of people, well, it depends on your application. A lot of people will use a wood conditioner because pine is so porous, it doesn't like to take stain real even. But for what I'm doing, I actually like that. I like that it doesn't take the stain uniform. Okay. I think that is plenty for us, so now, and make sure we have complete coverage. All right, I think that makes a, a nice bottom. Now we just gotta bring these together. Okay, I've got my stencil laid out, brontosaurus and some pine trees, and I've mixed up a blackish green acrylic paint that I'll use to do the trees here. Since it's a sunset, we're not really going to have a lot of color. So we want it to be nice and dark. Okay. So I definitely don't want to put it on too terribly thick. There's no light that's going to shine through him. When I am painting by the edge of the stencil, I'll be careful and start from the outside and work in. So I'm going to finish this up and then uh, we'll come back in a moment. Okay, so there we have it. I've taken off the stencil and it came out pretty good. We got the mountains off in the distance and our Happy little brontosaurus with his pine trees, a nice little sky there. So that's gonna about wrap it up. I'll step away, and like I said, this was gonna be a game board. I'll drill holes, maybe add a few finishing touches, and we'll take a look at the end product.